Okay, let's crank up the difficulty just a bit and make a clone of the classic piranha plant enemy. First, let's make the stem. Grab the pen tool and create this straight line of about two and a half tiles. Bend it like I'm showing you here, using the minor grid lines to guide yourself. You want to give it this S shape that you're seeing here. This is gonna be the stem, and it has to be very visible and look like it can hold the weight of the head. And finally, give it a light green color. For the head of the plant, make an ellipse of about four squares. and scale it horizontally, about less than half a tile. Place it on top of the stem and rotate it a bit down so it better matches with it. You can always adjust this later on, so don't worry about too much about the placement. Finally, give it a fairly saturated red. We need to add the classic lips and teeth that's so characteristic of this character. So using the pen tool, create a triangle to cut out the head shape. Draw a triangle of about 45 degrees. And perform the difference to cut out that section. Here's where you adjust the nodes if necessary. I recommend you to delete the unnecessary nodes and adjust the shape manually with the node tool, till you get something that you like. But a piranha plant clone is not complete without the lips. With the pen tool on top of the head border, draw this fairly thick arrow shape. Give it a light grey color, as always I recommend you to leave a trace of the red color so it looks a bit more interesting than plain grey. And now start rounding it. What I'm doing here is holding the shift key and clicking on a node and drag to the side. This pulls one of the two handles depending on where you drag, and this allows you to introduce a subtle curvature. Getting the shape that you want like this may need a bit of trial and error, so keep tinkering with it till you are satisfied with the shape you get. Once you're done, the next step is creating the teeth. These are pretty simple, just three rectangles on each side. Give them a darker shade of the grey of the lips. And move them below them. Now for a couple of finishing touches to the design. We're going to create this part of the flower that joins the stem and head. In the research that I did, it was called a receptacle or sepal, depending on what these parts are meant to be, which I don't know. I just wanted some shape to add to the back of the head, so they could be either. 
Uh, so from now on, I'll be calling it the receptacle because I need a name for it. And to me, it just sounds better than sepal. But first, let's analyze the shape because it can be a bit confusing. This shape can be separated in two parts. One, of course, the saw-like teeth, and the other in this trapezius-like shape. You'll see why we are making this shape in a moment. Make sure the trapezius shape follows and covers the back side of the head shape. And then add the saw shape. I recommend you to join them with a union. Okay, so here comes the important part. Remember what I showed you a minute ago about holding shift to introduce a curvature from a straight corner node? Well, we're gonna do that with all the teeth in this shape. Just hold control and drag to both sides. We want a nice rounded leaf-like shape. When you're done, give it the color of the stem. And we're almost done, but I think it needs another detail. I want another of this receptacle. You could redraw it again, but it's way easier to just duplicate it and make it larger. Change its color to a darker shade of the green and put it below the other. If you want, you could go in and change a bit the curvature of the teeth so it doesn't look like a duplicated shape. Ok, and for a final detail, I want to add a couple of leaves to balance the design a bit more. This is super easy, you've already done some leaves in the flower power up, so it's the same here. Just make the leaves shapes with the pen tool, and make them really big. What you want is that they balance the overall design, making the silhouette more interesting. Make two of them, put one on each side, and tinker with the rotation and scale. Give it the same color as the stem. Then if you want, you can create this vein in the middle. Give it a darker shade of the green, and also give it a fairly thick pixel width, enough so it's visible from far away. And that's it for the drawing of the shapes. Now to give it some shadows and details. First of all, I want to start with the lips. So give it a shadow shape on the lower part of the upper teeth and in the lower part of the lower teeth. Then intersect those shapes in and give them a shadow color. You may also want to give the teeth the same color than the shadow color, just for the sake of consistency. For the head shape, we want a shadow on the lower part, and maybe also a drop shadow from the lips. So grab the pen tool and draw these shapes. And when you're done, intersect them inside the head. Don't worry about the receptacle, just put the shadow shape below.
Now for the shadows of the receptacle. Of course we need a drop shadow from both shapes, so you know what to do. Duplicate the shape, move them a bit to the side and down, so they are visible. And give them a shadow color. Finally intersect them inside the right shapes. If you are bothered by the fact that there are two shadows overlapping here, you could just duplicate the black alpha shape and perform a difference with the drop shadow. This way you eliminate the section where they are overlapping. But you also want a shadow for the lower side of the receptacle. Just don't complicate yourself with this. Don't forget that this part is gonna be really small on the screen. Make a single shadow shape that goes through the two shapes. And at the moment of intersect them in, you'll have to duplicate both shapes of the receptacles and then join them with a union and use this shape to intersect the shadow shape. Don't forget that you're gonna have to use a black color with lower alpha because it goes through two shapes of different color. The stem and leaves also need shadows, but in order to be able to intersect the shadows with the stem, we need it to be a path. So you know what to do. Select it and go to Path, Object to Path. Now draw the shadow only on the parts of the stem that are roughly pointing down. So you'll have to separate the shadow into two shapes, like I'm doing here. As far as the leaves, don't complicate yourself, just make the shadows on the lower side of the leaves. Once you're done, intersect them in. For the color, I'm just sampling from the black shadow. And we are done with the shadows. Now for the final, final step, the outlines. These outlines may complicate you in a couple of places, depending on the way you drew the plant, or more specifically, the teeth. So in order to demonstrate how to solve that problem, I purposefully drew the teeth so they show this problem. But first let's start easy. Let's make the outline of the stem. You know what to do? Select all the paths that makes up the stem, including the two shapes from the receptacle, duplicate them, and join them together. Give it a nice and thick stroke, give it a darker shade of the green of the stem, and move it behind it. And now it's time for the head outline. Select all shapes that mix up the head, including the mouth and teeth. Duplicate them, join them, give them the thickness, the color, and move them to the back as you've done so many times over. But now you're probably gonna have a problem depending on how you drew the teeth. Well, the problem you may encounter is that you made the teeth a bit too sharp, causing Inkscape to flatten the stroke. Inkscape does this to avoid really long and uncomfortable outlines, resulting from really thick strokes and really sharp corners. Most of the time this is exactly what you want, but sometimes, like in the case of these teeth, 
it can really result in really distracting areas in the outline that call attention to themselves. One solution will be to go to the Stroke tab in the Freelancer dialog, and with this option selected, which should be selected by default, increase the number in the input until the stroke in the teeth area are no longer flattened. But now a new problem is evident. Now the stroke in the teeth are too long and they intersect each other. This is the problem Inkscape wanted us to avoid with the default options. Well, the only solution to this problem, while keeping the stroke nice and thick, is to go in there and modify the shape of the stroke manually with the node tool. Modify the nodes, pulling them back a bit, while trying to keep the biggest quantity of stroke outline in each teeth. If you see that you can possibly show too much outline because the position of the teeth makes it really hard, you could pick a teeth and move them slightly to the side and adjust the outline accordingly. Don't worry if from up close the stroke looks a bit wonky. What's important is that it looks okay from far away, so zoom out constantly. I know manually adjusting an outline is tedious, but it's the only way to have our cake and eat it too. And here is it, the finalized piranha plant clone. Now let's make the most complex character yet, the playable character Marlo the Plumber. 